Good evening, lovely tubers. White Mexican back again with another market watch investments video for you guys tonight. Seeing how it is the season of pre ban list times, I would like to review my personal selections of the forbidden slash ban cards because, you know, we're getting a new ban list soon, so why not? So, getting things kickstarted tonight, I'm going to start with one of my all time favorite ban magic cards. As I said, Magic cards, not spell cards, because back in the day, we used to have these beautiful magic stamps here, and it was pretty great. So, painful choice. There's a couple different versions of this. I want to talk about this version from Magic Ruler, specifically the original Magic Ruler, not Spell Ruler, because, you know, it got changed and completely reprinted in a different set. Anyway, with that being said, moving on here, of course, like always, we're going to be looking at Neat Lightly Played or Better for conditioning here on TCG Player and more specifically first editions. As you can see here, uh, non-first editions are roughly around two, three bones, are really not much of anything of value. There's a five plus pages here on the market here for TCG player. We're gonna keep on trickling down to hunt down some first editions. And it looks like they're pretty scarce since we get to about well, page four. So there's plenty of pages, plenty of availability on the market here. And the first first edition that we play is about six bones, roughly starting market price. And it pretty much is pretty stabilized for the first couple ones around six. And then slowly starts to trickle up after that. So um, that is going to be for the OG print of Painful Choice. Next is going to be Heavy Storm. So last list we got Harpy's Feather Duster 2 1. That was an amazing choice by Konami. I think everyone can say they're very, very happy with Harpy's Feather Duster coming back to one. We have both Regeki and Harpy's Feather Duster now back to one. Really great stuff. A lot of awesome nostalgic memories with that. The highest version going by TCG Market is actually going to be the Ultra Parallel Dawning from Hobby League 2. All the Hobby League cards in general have had quite a tendency of increasing in value of late. So um, these are just really old and I think they're just borderline becoming bleeding into the collector's market. Now, you do have to be careful with these because, if I'm not mistaken, if I have my history correct, I believe these were made by Upper Deck, manufactured by Upper Deck, and they tend to bow really bad, and they also have a thicker card stock, so um, you, you can't really play with them, to the best of my knowledge, in the higher echelons of, of gameplay and competitions, but you should be definitely fine for locals. And this is the highest um, version here, and then there's also uh, a quick flash review. I'm going to be reviewing this more, and specifically the OG print and the Hobby League prints would be my personal preference. But you can see that the uh, Super from Dark Beginnings holding about roughly, well, it's kind of price fluctuation between a half bone and three bones here. Um, but the Gold Series 8, which was actually the very first Gold Series, Gold Series 2008, is about three bones. So pretty interesting value in that, and a couple bones across the board um, for the others. Let's go ahead and talk about the Parallel Ultra. So Hobby League 2 Parallel Ultra is starting market price of 14 bones. And as well as with many uh, Hobby League cards, they're just really kind of disappearing from the market. I definitely think the collector's market is picking up on these because the quantities have just been dwindling dramatically in the market for these. So starting price is about 14, quickly trickles up to about 15, 17, 18 plus, and then bombs out at 20 for the first page for the Parallel Ultra. Dying from Hobby League 2. The second, and actually my personal favorite, is going to be the OG print from Metal Raiders. We're talking about Gen 1 Core Set 2, ladies and gentlemen. Amazingly old card. Uh, totally got that Twister vibe going on. Really awesome. I love the cow and all that. And Unlimited is really nothing. They're about, you know, two bones plus. Only four pages here on the market for TCG, and when we get into the first edition, that is when it gets interesting and the values just skyrocket. The very first edition we hear, we have some foreign Spanish ones here. Uh, they're sitting around 36, and then the first English ones are about 50 bones, and there's only uh, another page after that. So amazing, I mean, amazing card in general. Um, also very very old and definitely already well on its way into the collector's market if not already there next is going to be the infamous graceful charity my personal favorite is of course going to be hobby league 4 parallel ultra amazing legendary collection 3 my favorite reprint set of all time i have nothing but praise for this set a lot of awesome nostalgic old school cards and awesome rarities uh, a lot of secret rares and then of course the og super super rare which is actually the very first print 
which is really cool that, you know, fun fun history on this card was uh, the OG print was a starter deck. Not a structure deck, a starter deck I'm talking about. Like, I think it was like 2003 era. Like, we're talking about a 17-year-old set. Extremely old. Uh, really cool. More specifically for the first editions. And really, in my personal opinion, I would really only exclusively go for the first edition. So, moving on to the Parallel Ultras down from Hobby League 4. Starting market price is about 19 bones, and rightfully so. Again, Hobby League cards are starting to disappear off the market. They were only manufactured for a very limited time, and they're just extremely old now. And they look amazing, especially from 4. Uh, it's just really great. And um, so, yeah, 19 bones, and it quickly trickles up to about 20, 21, and then 26, and just kind of trickles on after that. There's only two pages on the market for the Parallel Ultras. Moving on to the Secret Rares from Legendary Collection 3. Um, again, just re really great deep Secret Rare pulling here. Starting market price for these for first editions is already at 20 bones. And it's, you know, tr tr trickles up to around 22 after that. And there's three pages available. So really, really good price value in the Secret Rares. And, of course, we have the original OG Prince. Super nostalgic, super amazing, super rares. Again, you want to focus specifically on the first editions, more specifically for collector's value. And of course, this has gone donning from Starter Deck Pegasus. This is part of the Gen 1 Starter Decks. Uh, I believe 2002 was when we got Kaiba and Yugi, and then I think 2003 was when we got Pegasus and Joey. So really, really great cards. All of the Hollow Pearls first edition, I think, are definitely eventually going to be um, bleeding into the collector's market for the first editions exclusively if they're lightly played or better condition. The first first edition here we get lightly played is roughly around three bones and there's another one right here, another one right here, and there's five plus pages. So surprisingly enough, I think this is extremely affordable. I don't think that these are going to be staying around three bones forever. Do I think that Graceful Cherry is going to get in banned? Do I think any of these cards can get banned? Potentially. Uh, white Mexican theory for you guys. Uh, everything gets unbanned eventually. It's just a matter of when and if it gets errated or not. So that's just, you know, my personal prayer preference on that. Really great stuff. Moving on to Pot of Greed, the most infamous draw power band card of all time. Uh, we have an amazing Duelist Pack Kaiba Ultimate Rare. We have a Dark Phoenix Super Rares. And of course, we have a Legendary Collection for Joey's World Secret Rares as well. As a legendary collection three yugi's world uh seek rares which you know both are really amazing sets they came out right back to back and um kind of ran parallel they got some of the same cards in the same rate which is really cool then of course we have the og legend of blue eyes we're talking about generation one set one core booster pack rares which are you know incredibly um expensive for the first editions exclusively so let's talk about the ultimate rares first so I personally have two copies of this, first edition, ultimate, uh, and I love them. It, I actually just picked up a second copy last week, and the other first edition, or the other, they're both first edition, but the first one I got was a long time ago. Um, some of my, like, crown jewel cards that have my collection, my band collection, I love pottery, and it just looks beautiful in ultimate rare. Starting off with a market price of 40, 45 and a half bones for the, un, for the unlimited versions, quickly jumps to about 50 plus. And then let's go ahead and find a first edition. Because you gotta go first edition. If you're gonna go ultimate rare pot grade, you gotta go first edition. Uh, first first edition, lightly played, goes all the way up to 149 bones. And rightfully so, this is very expensive, but it's ultimate rare. Deuce Pack Kaiba is relatively ancient now, and it's just an amazing, infamous band card. Next is going to be specifically the Legendary Collection 3 Secret Rare. I only chose to showcase this one over the Legendary Collection 4 because Yugi's World, I'm a little bit more accustomed to Yugi's World. It came out before Joey's World. It's older. I'm a little bit bigger fan of Yugi than Joey when it comes to anime stuff. And um, that was only the reason why I showcased this version specifically. But they're both Secret Rares. They both roughly came around, came out the same time. And uh, they're both relatively around the same price. I actually think the Legendary Collection 4 is a little bit more expensive than the Yugi one, which I really don't know why, because this set is older than that. But um, about 14 bones for the Unlimited, and then for the first first edition, we get about 16 bones, and then it kind of just trickles up after that to about 19, and then gets right under 20 after that. Three pages available for the Secret Rare version. And then we have the infamous Legendary Generation 1 Legend of Blue Eyes Rare. 
Honestly, this sounds crazy. I love my ultimate rares, and I, I have secret rares as well, you know, and I love the secret rares. But crazily enough, uh, this does say magic card, you know, it has that just nostalgic magic stamp, and I just can't get away from that. And this being, of course, dawning from the very first core booster set, Legend of Blue Eyes, you know, I, I have to give the top spot to this one, specifically only for the first editions for collectability purposes. Uh, about three bones for the unlimiteds. It's going to take a while to to find a first edition here. And I promise you, the price tag is going to be enormous for the first edition versions of this card. So going through here, about seven pages on the market price. And here's a Portuguese one, which, you know, um, no one's really going to care about. But, you know, 10 bucks for a Portuguese if you want that. There's... Apparently an Australian one. I didn't know Australian cards were a thing. Uh, roughly around 10 bones. And let's see here. Uh, the first first edition here, I, I'm assuming that's English, would be roughly around 12, uh, around 16 bones. So I'm actually surprised. I that you know, crazily enough, that that's actually uh, sounds like pretty good. I mean, it's a lot of money for just a rare card, but you got to take into account. This is like Generation 1, Core Set 1, Collectability, an extremely like infamous band card, and just an amazing card journal. Am I saying this card's going to come off the list this month? It Maybe, possibly. I mean, who knows? I mean, everyone wants this card to win. Um, players have been wishing this since, you know, it got banned just because it's such a ridiculous card. Um, but, you know, time will tell. All I can say is time will tell. And then, of course, we got the next version here. Uh, sitting at 21 bones from Core TCG. A really great seller, by the way. I, I buy from them a lot. Really credible. All right. Next is going to be Change of Heart. Of course, we have the amazing Legendary Collections 3. Again, Yugi's World um, shining bright with their great reprints. Secret Rare, uh, Dark Beginning, uh, Dawn, and Ultra Rare, which is sitting between 11 and 12. And then, of course, the OG Malvators Ultras, which I want to talk about more specifically. So starting with the Secret Rare from Legendary Collection 3, it's roughly sitting around 10 bones for the, you know, unlimited, and then about 18 for the first editions. I actually don't have any copies of this. I've been wanting to get a copy. So this has always been relatively a good price point, and it just continued to go up and up over time. And I just haven't got around to, you know, spending the money to get it. But an awesome, awesome reprint. And, of course, you know, Secret Rare is one of my favorite rarities. So great stuff on that. And, of course, we have the original OG Ultra Rares uh, of Meta Raiders. Again, very nostalgic, very old set, Gen 1 core set. And Unlimited are sitting around 7 bones, and we're going to go ahead and see if we can find a first edition. There's about 5 pages here on the market, and it looks like, oh, there was a Spanish one, it looks like, at the bottom of that. There's a Spanish one here for 30 bones, and the first, first edition English... Donning from the Yu-Gi-Oh! Black Market is a hundred bones. It like, trickles up to a hundred plus after that. So incredible price point on first edition change of heart. OG print. Next is gonna be Snatch and Steel. For the longest time I thought this card was called Snatch and Steel. Um, but my mistake on that, there is a Dark Beginnings Ultra Rare, I think, and a couple other versions. This is my personal opinion, the, the best rarity. It's the original one. Um, also there's a spell rule of reprint as well. But uh, this is the Mad Hat the Magic Stamp, and it's from the original Magic Ruler set, which I personally prefer just because it's older. It's just older. And starting price for this is going to be nine bones for unlimiteds, and there's about five pages on the market. And the first first editions are going to be a whopping thirty five bones, and then it jumps all the way up to forty four. So this that's really expensive for this card. This card came back for one format, one single format, and it got right back on the ban list. So really unfortunate. Amazing artwork. And again, back in the day, Secret Rarities was like the, the ceiling. You couldn't go past Secret Rarity. That was the highest of the high back in the day. So an ultra rare is a really high rarity uh, for a card this old. So really great stuff with that. Next is going to be Giant Trunade. So this card's pretty cool. There's some really awesome, powerful plays that you can play with this and some good recycling factors. Really cool artwork. There's a couple of versions, but this is, you know, their OG print, and it's the most valuable and the most collectible and all that stuff. So we're going to review uh, this version, 
and it's roughly around three bones for unlimited. There's four pages here on the market, and the first first edition is ten bones, which I personally think, and again, this is just personal play, uh, personal preference, white Mexican logic, whatever you guys want to say it. This is extremely good, and I'm gonna tell you why. Uh, yes, granted, this card is banned right now, but I promise you that this ten bone price right here. And this 10 bone price here, and this is actually doubled, and I still think this is a good deal. This sounds how crazy this sounds, because when I was in Japan about two years ago, I picked up maybe like three or four copies of these first editions lightly played for roughly around, I think it was like five, seven dollars or so. Now it's almost doubled to 10 plus, but I still think it's a good deal. Um, you can already see that the price points increase very quickly to about 15 plus shortly after the first couple first editions are sold, and the thing with this card is it's already in the collector's market. One, it has the magic stamp because it's part of the original core sets before they transition from magic to spell. Some really great uh, history value on its own merit alone. It is an old school super hollow foil. It's a very powerful card that combos incredibly well with a lot of different decks, a lot of great synergy for recycle factor, and it, it just has amazing artwork. It's got really cool artwork. It's you know it's really similar to like Heavy Storm and its artwork, I think. And it's it's old. It's extremely, extremely old. We're talking about Generation 1 Set 3 uh, for Magic Ruler. So um, I definitely would not be surprised if these get scooped up relatively soon. I think those are fantastic. Those are discount prices, in my opinion. It's only going to continue to go up. Next is going to be con Confiscation. Uh, there's a couple versions. This is the best. This is the Super Hollow Original. Again, another amazing band card from Magic Ruler. Love the artwork on this, and these are relatively uh, pretty affordable for the first editions. Um, again, I would not recommend investing anything less than these original OG prints from Magic Ruler for first edition. Unlimited are like two bones, they're like nothing. There's five pages on the market price here. The first first editions are actually very, very cheap. They are like th like roughly around three bones. There's several copies here that are roughly around three bones, and this is another card. I'm telling you guys, I just there's like I really believe in this card for so many different reasons. It's ancient as hell. It's a super hollow foil. It's got amazing artwork. It is an extremely amazing card. I mean, when it comes, when it, when it gets left off the list, who knows? We'll get it ratted. Who knows? But it's just got a lot of stuff going for it. It says spell card right here, but the ones from Magic will actually have the original spell uh, magic card stamp. So you're good on that. So great history, great collectability on uh, those versions. Super Rejuvenation is not banned. And this sounds silly, but I, I thought this card was still banned. I, I seriously thought this card was still banned. Today, we're talking about like 3, 4 December, 3 December 2020, the White Mexican discovers that Super Rejuvenation is not banned. I've been picking up these like crazy on the cheap because I still thought they were banned. That's why I thought they were so cheap. But this card's at 3. It's not even on the list at all. And this card is like ridiculous. Like how, like am I think this card really good. I think this is insane draw power. I think there's definitely some predominant dragon build that you can build that can give you some mad pluses. And it's a quick play. It's got, you know, several different super rare versions. It even has the, um, what's it called? The Lost Promotion Ultra Rares, which I think kind of look like garbage, personally. I prefer the OG. I think it was Pharaoh's Servant, or Legacy of Darkness, I think, Commons, or this this version specifically. I think there's like been like two or three different super rare prints, but... This was the original super rare print, again, out of, you know, Infamous Legendary Collection 4. And this card is, like, insanely cheap. I have so many of these. I really want to build a Dragon deck specifically just to plus off this card, because I think it's so, it's just so good, in my opinion, personally. All right, so moving on to the next set of cards here, Delinquent Duo. Uh, amazing artwork, and again, just a really, really great old school card here. Um, we're going to be talking more specific, specifically, of course, about the OG Magical Prints and the Secret Rare Prints from Legendary Collection Kaiba, another amazing reprint set. Um, of course, you have the Spell Ruler reprints and the Dark Beginning Super Rares, which are dying between 14 and 15 and about 15, 17 for the Spell Ruler versions. Moving on to the original OG Ultra Rares with the Magic Stamps from Magic Ruler, the first unlimited slightly played so we're going to get is going to be about 15 bones there's a five stack here from one up tcg and it's going to be like ungodly for the first editions again we're talking about set three generation one Yu-Gi-Oh. this is extremely old 
The first first editions are going to be around 35 bones and 35, 35, pretty much 34, 5 across the board. And that jumps all the way up to 56 and only four pages. So not a lot of availability on that. Again, there's so much going on with this card. It's got an amazing effect. Of course, it's banned. If it comes off, more than likely, it probably has to get ratted because it's just so good. Um, I love the artwork. Again, Ultra Rare was the second highest rarity back in the day. So really great stuff. And of course, you know, it has the magic stamp being old, which is really cool for history effect. Next is going to be the secret rare version, the highest rarity we currently have in TCG for prints. And this uh, is sitting at 16 bones for the unlimiteds and 60 bones for the first edition. So not a tough choice there. Um, this person has 27 though, but definitely um, I personally don't invest in anything unlimited myself. Um, but that's just personal preference personal preference i'm a collector naturally so uh that's just kind of the mindset that i live by and uh yeah roughly around 16 bones across the board for first edition secret so a really amazing stuff next is going to be the forceful century again magic ruler was just such a great set because it had some of the most ridiculous powerful magic cards and like they came in really great hollow foils and great artwork and just the same kind of the same pattern and suit uh it's got the magic stamp Old school ultra rare, really cool artwork, amazing, amazing effect. Uh, these are about uh, roughly around two, three bones for the unlimited starting market price. There's four pages on the market, and the first first edition is going to be nine bones, which sounds kind of crazy, but this sounds very, very affordable to me um, for considering all the things that I mentioned about this card. I really don't think it's going to stay uh, very long because you see here it goes to about 11 bones. And then trickles up to about 13 and kind of trickles up after that. And then only four pages. So really great stuff. This is the personally the only version I would go for. Of course, there's the Spell Ruler one. And I think there's a Dark Beginning version, if I'm not mistaken. But I would always go for collectability purposes. purposes always first edition, always OG print. Especially for these old school band cards. Next is going to be Mirage and Nightmare. Again, old school Gen 1 card, so it's got the magic stamp. There's two versions I want to talk about specifically, the OG print from Phronic Guardian and the Secret Rare reprints from one of the Legendary Collection sets. I think it was the, obviously either 3 or 4. Um, and these are insanely cheap. Uh, 2-ish, $3 a piece for the first editions on these. Five pages on the market. It's kind of tough, but I honestly think normally I would go for like collectability and kind of Nostalgic OG prints for the first edition supers, and I really love Front Guardian a lot. I'm all about the first 13 core sets. That's like my main my main mission in this game for collectability purposes. But the secret rares look really juicy. Like I'm not gonna lie, the secret rares just completely blow the super rares out um, in aesthetics, uh, at least. Like you can just look at the comparison. The supers look very very outdated and faded to like the pop of the secret rares, but um, secret rares also a little bit more expensive. But you know, it's it looks great. So it's kind of up to you if you want to go for like old school OG nostalgia collectability or like just nice looking secrets, which you know are you know secrets. So they're pretty good. Um, these are about five ish bones starting market price. That's pretty much how much it is across the board. About five bones, only three pages available here for the secret version. Next is going to be engage for all you Star Sky Striker players. I never piloted this deck. I actually suffered through the format when these are just like wrecking havoc on everything and they hated this deck for the longest time, but it got like brutally annihilated by the ban list and no one really plays it anymore. But I know there's a lot of um, core players that really miss this and you know have all their maxed out ultimate rare extra deck link cards and all that. But uh, original OG prints are roughly around six, seven dollars, same with the secret reprint, and then no one really cares about the uh, lowly ultra rares. And Spellbook of Judgment, again, there's a huge player base. Uh, this was a big fan favorite deck. OG Prince from Lord of the Tachyon Galaxy, probably first edition, and, let, let, and on Unlimited are probably around the same price, six around six bones, and about three for the 2014 Mega 10 rep, uh, reprints. Next is going to be That Grass Looks Greener. Fun fact about this card, it is a solo print dawning from Raging Tempest. Raging Tempest, of course, was a set that dawned all the Zodiac crazy shenanigans at full power, which was really insane. And we're seeing a revision in Zodiacs with the whole Tri-Brigade build slash whatever else that they use, but it's a pretty popular deck right now. 
And this card's really good. There is a lot of decks that are grave eccentric, and it's got really cool artwork. And it's an OG print, and it is a secret rare, a high rarity of secret rare. Unlimited are sitting around eight bones, and first editions are sitting around uh, about ten. And there's about five plus pages on the market, so awesome update on that. I don't know why this card is banned. So the next card is going to be Premature Burial. There is the Dark Reading 1 Super Rares. For some reason, they're between 5 bones and 16 bones. I don't really know why. The best version is the OG Ultra Rare print, Dawning on a Fair Servant. Of course, um, I don't think you can really contend with that. We have Monster Reborn at 1. We have Call of the Haunted at 3. Um, I, just, I, really, I really don't understand why this is banned. Can someone explain to me why this card is still banned? It's so unrelevant. I just Maybe there's a combo. I'm not, you don't even have to pay for it, too. It's not even free. Like Monster Reborn, you can steal from your opponent's graveyard. It's free. Um, you know, it doesn't destroy the monster if the equip card gets popped. So I just, it's crazy. I just, I don't really, would be really disappointed if this card doesn't get lifted to like three immediately because it's just, I, I really don't understand why it's banned. But, uh, maybe just my lack of, you know, education, I'm not sure. But Unlimiteds are sitting around about five and a half bones. There's five plus pages here on the market. And let's go ahead and see if we can... Hunt down a first edition. First first editions are about 13 bones. So, interesting. Next is going to be Dimension Fusion. This card is worth so much money. It's insane. Um, the Dark Rev stuff, again, I'm just I'm not a big fan of Dark Rev stuff. There is like a whole community out there that likes Dark Rev stuff. I'm just nothing against them. It's just it's it's like low rarity for high dollar. I really don't understand it, but I, mean, I get it, like it was a subset, it was not like produced highly or something but anyway between 47 and 52 51 plus bones for a super rare reprint and uh let's talk take a look at the original ultra which i personally like the first edition original ogs is like always going to be my thing one because they're og prints one because it's ioc invasion of chaos like the set that dawn cookie cutter chaos format with black luster soldier and chaos emperor dragon yadagratsu uh, Sangan, Witch of the Black Forest, like all that, that just that amazing, like, amazingly terrible but great format. Um, one of my favorite memories about this game, uh, formats at least. Uh, so Unlimiteds are starting at 26 bones for just simply Unlimiteds. First editions are on a whole other level. Uh, first first edition starts at 37, then jumps all the way up to about 44. So. Another thing that's really cool about this and why I wanted to specifically showcase these uh, Forbidden Ban cards is, again, because the the price fluctuations of these cards during pre-banless season, like right before it comes out, is just, it's really colorful if you, like, watch the trendings. All right, next is going to be Cold Wave. So there's the original OG prints with uh, Magic Stamp here, of course, from Pharaoh Servant, which are, like, pretty much, you know, nothing. Um, more specifically, I would normally go again for the OG prints first editions. But there is a Champion Pack 6, which is extremely old, um, you know, just as old as Pharaoh's Servant, if not, you know, well, yeah, it has to be at least as old as Pharaoh's Servant, a little bit old, uh, newer, but just like the the tournament packs, the Champion Packs, like the very first, like, like you know, tournament, yeah, tournament champion packs and all that. Just there, there's insanely, insanely old and insanely, uh, incredibly valuable for collectors' uh, value purposes. And um, even though it is a lowly common, it is still champion pack, which is really cool. And it's extremely cheap. It's like under a dollar all across the board. The only problem is there's not really a lot of fat stacks. Like there's a 12, three stack here, four stack here, only one page, and that's pretty much gone. It is cleaned out. Um, would this card necessarily be played? Maybe, maybe not. If it came back, would it come back past one? Probably not. Probably just go to one. Will it, would it get errated? I mean, who knows? Time will tell. But I definitely think this card can come to at least one. So, I mean, if you invest, like, a couple bones and get several copies of this, like, if you want to just clear out this 12 stack for, you know, 12 bones, I think you're in a pretty good position. As, you know, especially seeing how um, it's champion pack six, which is extremely old. So that's all I have to say about that. For all your GOAT players, of course, Metamorphosis. I'm not even going to review the Super Rare. Again, here we go. Perfect example, Champion Pack 1. So the very first Champion Pack, 
It's a super rare hollow. Go player's dream. This card is like ridiculous. Uh, it's like 500 plus. Of course, you got the dark revs. It's in between six and five. But I want to talk about the OG print specifically from Feral Servant. Um, this is good money. I mean, the unlimited alone are six bones plus. They're roughly around six bones. And then the first editions are eight. So, and you, granted, this is just a common. So, I actually have several sealed um, unlimited booster packs of Fair Servant. I, I kind of want to open them just to see, like, how many of these I can pull. But the thing is, you know, you always have to keep in mind that there always has to be a buyer. There has to be people picking these up. And, you know, everyone wants the super rare. And sadly enough, probably even the Dark Revs uh, version over the OG print. Me, personally, I would always want, you know, first edition OG print. But, uh, they, you know, that's just me personally. That's all I have for you guys tonight. Um, I have Facebook. It's gonna The link is going to be below. You can add me. You can message me. I would love to hear from each and every one of you guys. Yu-Gi-Oh! has been a great hobby and passion of mine for, you know, about two decades now. I really love the... The friendships and the trading and the investing and the selling and the buying is just a really important thing to find things in life that you just really enjoy. And the community has just been nothing but really positive. And I think this game does a lot of great things in people's lives that, that like to invest the time and effort into it. So I hope you guys are making some fantastic Yu-Gi-Oh! investments yourself. This has been a showcasing by The White Mexican, and I will see you in the next video.